Hi, thanks for joining me today. We're looking at the Ecozy Plus Mulberry 10 wood burning stove. And to begin with, we're going to be looking at approvals and output. So this is a beast of a stove, the Mulberry 10. It weighs nearly 140 kilos um, and is a full cast iron construction. It has a nominal heat output of 10 kilowatt with a maximum heat output of nearly 14 kilowatt. Something which is really actually almost unheard of in modern eco-design stoves. It's very hard to get these modern stoves to burn efficiently at such a high temperature. So we think this stove unit is gonna be very popular because for people looking for that big cast iron stove that can fit lots of wood in, wide, deep, high, uh, will be really good for them. As for um, approvals on this unit, so it is as we just touched on there, eco-design ready, suitable for uh, use in UK homes. Also approved to sit on a 12 millimeter half. So this is inside a fireplace here, so not applicable here. However, you're having the unit freestanding, it will be suitable for that as well on a 12 mm half. It's worth noting now that the unit isn't DEFRA approved, which means it can't be installed into a smoke-free zone like London or Manchester. Uh, but the general thinking is to be honest, in most cases, the stove's gonna be too big um, for those sort of town properties anyway. And it's also noting that it does have a six inch flue as well. So a lot of people buy a DEFRA approved unit, which has a five inch flue because you can fit a five inch system, whereas this unit doesn't have that anyway. Um, a little advantage of it not being DEFRA approved, it does fully close off as well. So the vent's fully closed down, which means it can burn longer and overnight burn is going to be a lot more attainable in this unit. So the stove is fully ablaze at the moment with all the air controls open. So we're going to gradually close them down. The stove's been actually established for a while, uh, but I want to kind of show you how you would use it normally anyway. So you kind of want to start with the primary airflow. You only really want this one open when you first light the stove to give it a big boost of air underneath, lots of air rushing in so it takes off nicely. So we'll close this one down. Now you won't see a big difference. You think that's probably done nothing. But if you look at the embers inside close down, they start to sort of reduce their glow as less air is flowing through them. The actual flame pattern is changed by these two controls here. The air wash system, where air is flowing through here and then onto the glass and into the stove. And then the secondary air flowing in from the back of the stove over the fire. That's where you get the biggest reduction in the flames. And this is actually where you're gonna to help to keep the heat inside the stove as well. Currently, you know, it looks great blazing away, but you will be losing a lot of heat up the chimney. So we're just gonna gradually close off. We'll start with this one here, the one on the bottom. Just a little bit in. Again, it won't be a great difference because this one here, the air wash system is still flowing lots of air in. When I close this one off, this is when you're gonna see the dramatic difference as it closes down. And this is when the heat's gonna be tumbling through. Instant. And then we'll just notch it in a little bit again. And you see, you just get that little curtain here as the air's flowing through this vent. Now the advantage of this stove actually um, going back to um, the approvals that it's not DEFRA approved is it does fully close down. For those wanting to burn overnight, that is a big plus. And you also do get this drastic control ability with it, uh, which is really good. So now open that up again, and you'll see it's fully taking off. This one, you get the most noticeable um, effect on it. But if we close that one down, and you see it's off again, and then just open this one up a little bit and then the air will slowly be getting through there again. That was not fully open at the moment, but you get the control here, and then the two together are gradually curtaining the air down like that. So that's the controls of the stove. Fuel, so this is a wood burning only stove. However, it's quite unique because it does have a grate and ash pan with a primary airflow on the front, something which is generally only required if you're burning smokeless coal on a multi-fuel stove. Usually with a wood burning stove, it would just burn on the base, no primary air, and just burn on a, bit, on a little bed of ash. Now this would be made like this, mainly for actually practicality for the customer, because some people do demand an ash pan, they like an ash pan, they like a grate, and they like the primary air. So it's kind of balancing the best of both worlds, and it's actually very useful with the primary air when you first light the stove. 
to have all the controls fully open, it really takes off really well, gets it nice and established, nice and quickly. And then you want to have, like I said, close that one off and then the wood will burn nicely. As mentioned, it's not a multi-fuel stove, so you can't burn smoked as coal on it. However, if you're burning smoked as coal for longevity reasons, this stove does have a really good capacity inside. It's a really big stove. Um, and as we mentioned, you know, in the, in the control section of this video, closes down really nicely so it can just tick over and then obviously you can actually burn overnight on this one as well because it's not got the death for stopping you can burn overnight providing you burn the correct fuel on it obviously you only get out what you put in just tap that open a little bit there maintenance and daily use so it's fairly easy to maintain inside you've got the standard fire brick lining we do stop these um, however, if you've ever lost our details, these are just vermiculite boards. They're very easy to cut, pretty much just with a wood saw or a jigsaw, um, but we do stop those. Great and everything is replaceable too, um, but general day-to-day -day use, because it's a wood burning only stove, I would suggest just leaving it. Don't fully clean out, just leave a little bit of a bed of ash, just so some air can get in when you first light the stove. But leaving a bit of a bed on there as well, and only clean the ash pan out every so often. It just doesn't need cleaning out daily. Leaving the bed of ash also does actually help to protect the grate as well and uh, prolong that. All the inside baffle plates are all removable. So when the chimney sweep comes, they can all be just popped out and put back in again. Stove's looking very black at the moment, but if it does get dirty, you can buy these sort of stove polishes online or even just a real quick up, quick touch up with some, with some paint, refreshes them beautifully. Um, glass is kept very clean here with the air wash system. It, as you can see, if you're burning dry wood, it will stay nice and clean. If it starts going black, and if the bricks and styes start going black, you can generally assume that wet wood's being burnt, or a bit of both, with wet wood being burnt and the stove being run too slow, the two combined, really make it go nice and dirty. But if you were wanting to clean the glass, um, just that you can buy either HG glass cleaner, different sort of stove cleaners you can buy for the glass, or just simply dip a wet cloth in the ash when it's cold, give it a scrub um, with a cloth, and then it comes up quite nicely. And then the final bits of residue are generally burnt off when the stove gets up to temperature. Um, I hope these few little features that we've done on this stove have been helpful. But as always, if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you.